Conservative MP Ed Fast has resigned as his party's finance critic. He says MPs supporting Pierre Polyev tried to muzzle him from speaking about monetary policy. Interim party leader Candace Bergen issued a statement late yesterday. It reads, Ed has publicly stated his support for one of the Conservative Party of Canada's leadership candidates and would like to be able to offer more dedicated support to that team. I had a chance to speak with Ed Fast a short while ago, and I just want to note for you that the conversation was taped before that breaking news that the government plans to ban uh, Huawei from 5G in Canada. Hi, Mr. Fast. Good to have you on the show. Good to be on your show. Uh, the, the interim leader of your party, Candace Bergen, on your, uh, you're stepping away from your uh, shadow finance minister uh, role, said that you did so because uh, you've publicly stated your support for, in this case, Jean Charest, and would like to be able to offer more dedicated support to that team. Is that the full story? I think that encapsulates it, yes. And so what, what prompted you? Because it, it's been a while since you did declare your support, your co-chair of the campaign. What is it that sort of pushed you over the line? Well, this has been brewing for a while. Um, you know, the finance critic who sits at the finance committee table is charged with reviewing Canada's fiscal and monetary policy. And of course, monetary policy is incredibly important today to Canadians because we're in an inflation crisis, the worst we've seen in over 30 years. So monetary policy really, really matters. Uh, I've been digging into that policy. In fact, when the governor of the Bank of Canada came uh, some weeks ago, uh, questions were asked about cryptocurrency, about the independence of the central bank, etc. And unfortunately, some of my colleagues on one of the other campaigns, the leadership campaigns, took umbrage with the fact that I would be dealing with issues at committee that I was properly charged with, but that also implicated some policy positions that uh, that team was taking. Um, and over, over time, over the last few weeks, um, my ability to actually speak freely about the issues that really matter to Canadians, I feel has been uh, somewhat muzzled because of these expectations that the finance critic will not speak out on issues that are being raised in the leadership campaign. So I felt it was best to uh, ask our leader, Candace Bergen, to relieve me of my responsibilities, which she graciously did. And I'm free to speak up. Uh, let me ask you a little bit more about that because my guess is, uh, and I think our audience will be familiar with the issue now that you're referring to some of the criticism directed towards the Bank of Canada from uh, Jean Charest's rival in this leadership race, Pierre Polyev. More specifically, I think he's called the bank financially illiterate and he said that he would fire the governor of the Bank of Canada. Are you saying that in instances uh, in your role as, as critic, you were... Uh, saying things that did not go uh, in line with those positions and then his supporters were trying to muzzle you? And what do you mean by muzzle? Yes, that's essentially what happened. Uh, by muzzle, I, I would just say that uh, a number of MPs expressed uh, their concerns that uh, Mr. Polyev's campaign uh, was being impaired by the fact that I was speaking honestly about uh, monetary policy. And because I am a supporter of Mr. Charest, obviously that colors yeah. their perception of what uh, I was saying. So I felt it best just to step back uh, until the leadership uh, race is over. In hindsight, do you regret not doing that sooner? And, and can you understand the, the perspective that because of your support for Mr. Charest, your positions, no matter how, how much you hold them near and dear, were kind of cast under a different light? No, I don't regret uh, waiting until now because I had a real opportunity to work at the committee with some amazing uh, conservative MPs who really understand monetary and fiscal policy. We also just came through the budget process and to, to quit halfway through would probably not have been very good or healthy. And so I think the timing was right uh, to do it yesterday. Pierre Polyev's campaign directed uh, my colleague Catherine Cullen, who wrote a story on this, to uh, Chris Workington, who said that, uh, you know, disputed the, the allegation that you were muzzled in any fashion and said what many of us in caucus really objected to was Ed reinforcing liberal talking points about inflation to defend his preferred candidate. 
Your response to that? Defending the independence of the central bank is not a liberal talking point. Speaking about cryptocurrency and its value as a way of opting out of inflation, that is not a liberal talking point. Now, Chris is a good friend of mine. I very much respect him. But he is one of uh, Pierre Polyev's surrogates and obviously has been asked to come out and challenge uh, what I've been saying. I stand by every word that I've said. Uh, I believe the central bank has to remain independent. It has functioned very well for many, many decades. And if Mr. Polyev really believes that he's smarter than Mr. Macklin, then he should perhaps change professions move up through the ranks and maybe someday become governor. But right now we have a governor that has been charged this with, with this responsibility and we can challenge him, which we have done at committee. He admitted at committee recently that they didn't get everything right. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to have seen them uh, respond to these inflationary uh, pressures much earlier, but it is what it is. And let's not forget that virtually every central bank around the world in developed countries have had the very same challenges. They're all facing inflationary pressures. The Bank of England, they've got 9% inflation in England. The US is not much better. And they've got uh, the Federal Reserve and uh, they respect it. In fact, they just recently appointed the, the Fed uh, chairman. So I think we have to respect these institutions that were designed to be independent of political interference and what I've seen is Pierre Polyev interfering in that process. I believe that's very unhealthy. It, it's also what you're describing of, you know, not just a minor political difference. It's a huge ideological, ideological rather, and policy difference. The one that you're putting forth and what we hear from the Polyev campaign. I think a lot of Canadians, after listening to uh, the debates that have taken place so far uh, and, and some of the back and forth on social media are certainly questioning the unity of your party. If Pierre Polyev is leader of your party and becomes prime minister and tries to fire the Bank of Canada's governor and continues to attack the independence of that institution, do you see yourself staying on, for example, as an MP? Like, are you, are you OK with being a conservative under that leadership? Listen, whoever wins the leadership race, I will support. Uh, my differences with Mr. Polyev are not personality differences. They are policy differences. I think they're very serious, substantive policy differences. And I'm going to continue to articulate them. But I'm not going to be nasty. I'm not going to use inflammatory rhetoric to do that. I'm just going to talk about the facts. I'm going to talk about proper monetary and fiscal policy that will steer Canada back in the right direction. Right now we're going backwards. I think we need an improvement and I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Just before I let you go, do you think though that the, the candidate you've endorsed, Sean Charest, could lead a party where you, even as finance critic, are as you say, as you characterize it, muzzled? Actually, the reason I'm supporting Jean Charest is because I believe he's a serious, thoughtful leader who can actually unite our party and unite our country and take us forward with a common vision. But I also know that he is someone who does not muzzle people. I, I've known Jean now for some 11 years, and he is someone who actually welcomes a robust debate on the issues that concern Canadians. And uh, so I believe that under his leadership, the voices of all members of parliament of our and of our Conservative caucus will be heard, will be respected, will be considered before decisions are made. Thank you, Mr. Fast. I'll leave it there. Appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.